In today's episode, I will be playing as Castile, which is a country of not one, not two, but many rebellions. But don't worry, everything will be fine. Because I will show you, of course, how to survive all of this and how to pacify your competitors in colonization. That's exactly what this miniseries will focus on. Greetings, imperialists! It's Lucas here. Paradox claims that Castile is a country for new players. They lied to you! But I hope that after watching today's tutorial, playing with this country will be much easier. I'm choosing the campaign on the difficult level. Iron Man. Let's begin! Currently, in my opinion, Castile is not a country for beginner players because it is a country of rebellions. We practically have two civil wars. One of them starts right from the beginning of the game. If we handle Granada poorly, we will face a certain Moors Rebellion and a few other things that I will show you in the later part of this guide. We also have weak rulers, which is a big disadvantage. Moreover, a very, and I mean very bad privilege, has been added to us. Fractional nobility. I don't know what it means, but we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. And it won't be easy because we need 50% of crown land. That's why the only privilege I'm taking for the nobility is supremacy over the crown. I don't distribute monarchy points among the other estate. However, religious diplomats will still be useful for the clergy. Clerical education is also important and super important. And we don't take cheaper advisors. Only for the burghers' estate, preferential loans, you all know why, our trading fleet will have to exist. So we want to have cheaper ships. Economic freedom for merchants will come in handy, as well as higher taxes and cheaper construction. That's it for now. Next, we seize land and recruit the army. Fingers crossed, we want to fulfill our mission for the estate. And luckily, I also got a military advisor in the missions. Although I would prefer an administrative advisor if he were available but I don't have one. Now we abdicate our heir and take the privilege for prestige. Our rivals are quite peculiar. We definitely want to have England, Lithuania, okay, and France. As for our alliances, ideally, a perfect start would be if I could have an alliance with Aragon, and it greatly accelerates the early gameplay when we have it. But what's most important is, of course, an alliance with Burgundy, because getting the Low Countries for free is a great deal. As for our court, it might surprise you, but we set our focus either on administrative or diplomatic points. Military points, not so much. I will go for administrative points because we will need a lot of them most likely unless I get lucky with events I also hire advisors for taxes it will pay off for us diplomatic reputation will come in handy and temporarily military advisor as well it doesn't matter which one. Oh, and of course we cancelled the recruitment of the army naturally we also avoid an alliance with Portugal we don't want it because we can quickly have that country in a personal union from our fleet we separate the heavy and transport ships for now we'll mothball them and we'll send the trading fleet to protect trade I tested it in Seville and it works best. We build a flagship. It will come in handy in upcoming wars. And now, yes, we definitely want a trade bonus for me. The fleet's combat width. Can we say that? And if you care about quick exploration of the world, take fleet movement speed plus one. I'm not so concerned about that, so I'll buy a special perk for the Spanish here. More cannons. I'm not sure if it's profitable. You can let me know in the comments. The other two ships are, of course, trade ships. We also take the Spanish maritime doctrine. And here comes the Great Armada. Absolutely, but at a later stage of the game. Currently, either the trade bonus or we can choose not to take anything. I'm not doing that. I'll use the money for something else. Speaking of money, reduce the army, reduce fortifications. I'll send diplomats to Austria as well. I'll work on improving relations with them. I hope for an alliance, although it will be later on, because at this stage, I can't form it due to the difficulty level. There shouldn't be any problems with that on normal difficulty. Moreover, we have a mission here that allows us to quickly acquire Austria in a personal union. And I'll honestly take the risk here and try to achieve it around 1600 so that I have Hungary, Bohemia, and maybe even Poland in a personal union, because then I won't hide it. Eastern Europe will be in our hands. Finally, I can unpause. We ignore Navarra. Let that country go to Aragon, and I've unpaused. The first crisis is starting. Aragonese Infantes, whoever they were, and it seems that there was some event related to it in Aragon. I'll have to check it someday. I got lucky. Aragon decided to improve our relations. What's more, I gained a stability point. As Spain, we also want to have the best possible relations with the papacy, so we can form an alliance with them. And remember to send a royal marriage proposal to Burgundy. You guys have to send it. We say no to Portugal. Attention! Very important matter. We have received new local organizations. Previously, they were orders. There are a lot of them now, and most of them are completely useless. In my opinion, some of them are currently very situational, but in most of our provinces, we definitely want to have either Benedictines or Jesuits. At first I thought about the Order of St. James, but then I realized that it's only a 5% manpower bonus. That's nothing. 
I consider the remaining orders to be quite situational. Everywhere else, I want to have one of the two I mentioned, although taxes are tempting. But we all know that the best economic modifier in this game is increased production of goods. Four months before our country's crisis kicks in, we need to recruit some mercenaries who will suppress all the rebellions for us. Honestly, I think a great company will be enough to handle all those rebellions. So we need to set off soon in search of gold outside of Europe. But we all know where the closest one is. Just in case, remember that Spain has gold in La Mancha. Two things have happened. The first one is this. It's the first very bad event. And attention, it is very important if we support the king. We will have quite substantial rebellions in our country. Plus, we will lose stability. And if we take the side of the Infantes, here it is written more precisely. You will not be able to have Isabella of Castile later in the game. So yeah, we want to support the king. It's really important, but there's a complication. Okay. I activate the fortress and head to that location. It's possible that even our army will come in handy. So I'll reinforce it as well. I thought these rebellions would be smaller. We'll crush the rebels at our fortresses to make them suffer losses and setbacks, unfortunately. But fortunately, most of them are mercenaries. That's why I hired them in the first place. And here's another thing that happened. Aragon removed us from the rival list. Yes! I just noticed it now, so let's form an alliance with them, absolutely, and I'll destroy the remaining gathering of the rebels here. Of course, let the mercenaries take the lead, we'll completely crush them. I managed to deal with this crisis exceptionally quickly, really exceptionally quickly. Maybe it's because of Aragon's fondness for me. And after these events, we have 40% of the crown land. We're increasing stability fairly quickly by plus one. We're getting closer to revoking that privilege. We could execute the mission quickly, but honestly, I prefer to wait with it. Because when we complete it, our current rule gets a plus one bonus to each stat, and I wish for that ruler to die as soon as possible. However, you can still take that mission if you encounter the Castilian Civil War. Completing that mission will prevent the conditions necessary for this crisis from occurring, simply because you'll have a ruler who's too good. I'm quickly forming an alliance with Austria. Now we enter into a royal marriage with them, and honestly, I'll be hunting for a certain event related to the Habsburg. For that, we need to have a royal marriage with Austria. If I remember correctly, we can't have an heir to the throne. Enrique, oh my god, he's so epic. How can you not love him? But is he worth the upcoming civil war? A very good question, but look, if I click here, there won't be a civil war, and I think I'll go that route too. Meanwhile, we can continue the Reconquista. No need to wait for anything here. So, we just wait for this peace period to end, and we go to war with Granada and its allies. Meanwhile, Aragon loses the personal union over Naples, and usually, it's a good time to form a marriage with Naples, but currently, it's not necessary, because we'll get it through the mission. Here it is. I really need to check the conditions of this event, since I keep getting it so often. Nice. If I had known that the previous crisis would go so smoothly, I would have focused more on diplomatic points after all. The invasion of Granada. We call Morocco separately to this war, but not Tunisia. We shouldn't need allies, because I have this cool general. Let's not forget about him. Let's gather our fleet here in the north for now. When did such a modifier come up that galleys are not much better in coastal waters? Why don't I know anything about it? Oh, the Wars of the Roses in England, and it's actually good, but I won't support rebels in England. What's the point? But a weak ruler. Hey, you know what? I'm still not a pirate, if they haven't fixed that bug. Okay, now I am. All right, the fleet is repaired and just in case. We don't want transport ships in our naval fleet because look, they are much weaker than regular ships. Four cannons, while light ships have 10 and heavy ships have 40. And they are much less durable than heavy ships, but more durable than light ships. What's better? I think light ships would be better after all, but it would be best to have galleys here. Ooh, how nice. In small battles, let's try to sink the enemy fleets, but be cautious in closed seas. Here, galleys have a 100% bonus, not 50. Hey, but looking at these galleys, now they practically have bonuses everywhere. They are so powerful now. And in battle, one heavy ship takes up the space of three galleys. I guess heavy ships are still better. Yes, definitely I'm the one sinking their ships. I haven't lost any. They lost 19. The tactic you see can be used actually on every level, but it works best on normal or hard, because on very hard, they have a very high manpower increase, namely, after capturing Granada, we completely retreat. We take the military access from Portugal and wait. Suckers. That's why I didn't call any allies to this war, you know. Their fleet would block this strait, but this way Tunisian troops can enter. There are still mercenaries here, just so you know. They didn't want to attack that fortress for some reason. I achieve victory. My fleet sets sail. The army managed to retreat, so we attack with the second army and Tunis gets a stack wipe. We repeat this until the end. In this country, you know, the sand powers, they don't have a lot of manpower. We burn through it very quickly this way. 
way. I'll even let more of their troops pass through because we can keep repeating the stack wipes. I think I won't get tired of it. Morocco stopped granting military access and it happens that they are, unfortunately, in a civil war. But I believe I've already dealt them some losses. All right, I take back what I said. They're going there. Great, I'm very happy about it. I let them through, let everything go there. Wait, no, wait, wait, no, come back. We let the entire Moroccan army through. However, they're going there to destroy the rebel, and at this moment we'll likely destroy the enemy's 30,000 troops. Such a beautiful sight. Now what I want to do is to destroy at any cost the Moroccan army, and spare the armies of their vassals, because I count on them becoming disloyal at some point, and freeing themselves from Moroccan rule. I've been waiting for this, for these vassals to finally start forming alliances among themselves. Of course, in the meantime, I initiate the development of La Mancha. There's no need to wait here. Well, maybe for the Renaissance, it will speed things up a bit. We break the alliance with Tunis, take one province. Most importantly, we humiliate and take the rest of the money. Of course, we fully conquer Granada. Now it's time to determine the future of the Kingdom of Granada. Honestly, it's best to relocate them all from here. In the other case, we would have a few other events and we would get a 50% cheaper missionary. But beware, there's a catch here. If you manually convert the province of Granada, it would lead to Moorish rebellions, quite significant rebellions. Oh, and great, Morocco is in a civil war, plus Portugal. In the meantime, I developed La Mancha. We'll immediately trigger the organization of the Benedictines here. Nice money! Time for a quick war with England. We literally just need that one province from them, but preferably two, so we call one of our allies to this war. Burgundy. No one else will be needed. You know, it's a great opportunity because the Portuguese army is in Morocco. From Portugal, we'll take those two islands. It will slow down their colonization a bit. We'll transfer their trade power and take war reparations. Unfortunately, the Burgundians have a larger share in the war, so they would get the majority of the Portuguese money, so it doesn't make sense to involve them. Meanwhile, I'm asking the Scots for the right to base our ships there. Of course, I also have a military access. I got caught by the English fleet, but somehow I'm sinking them. What's happening here? Four heavy ships just went down. Wow, okay, we're engaged in a very tough battle here, but luckily we're winning it. And the war with England ends as follows. We establish a foothold here. We take those two provinces, where to accumulate as much debt as possible in England. War reparation. And now listen, don't think that I will conquer England now. No, we will acquire it later through a personal union. The foothold I have is just to attack them from time to time and take their money. Because England is a very wealthy country with a weak army, while we release Gascony as our vassal. Gascony has many territorial claims against France, and you know who our target will be soon. Meanwhile, the ruler abdicates and makes sure that we spread out the royal marriages because Maria is alive. Unfortunately, another civil war has broken out and we cannot support anyone. If we had a child, maybe we could, or maybe we can. Wow. Okay, we are heading towards Aragon, which happens to have a female ruler. Great. Really, the French? Honestly, I have some conclusions. There was no point in delaying the Castilian Civil War. We should have initiated it as soon as possible. We increase stability and search for rebels. Where are they? Seriously. And the Civil War has come to an end. Easy. Now it's time to choose ideas. And I'll tell you the first four I'm taking. Of course, I'm playing heavily focused on colonization, so I choose exploration and expansion as a pair. I will also take influence and administrative ideas. If you want to play completely completely focused on colonization, you can also consider infrastructure ideas as one of the first four, preferably as the second or third. This is due to the policy that combines exploration ideas with a colonial development boost of plus one. Since I've stabilized the situation in my country, it's time to attack France along with my allies, of course. First, I won't move my troops. I'll wait for Burgundy and Austria to make their move. They should be able to handle France without any problems. No, there I will focus on sinking the French fleet. My allies are not doing very well. In the meantime, as you can see, I am slowly capturing and losing fortresses. The first development I will take is definitely increasing the development in our colonies. If you're playing for conquest and European dominance, because you can also play Castile that way, then aggressive expansion is the way to go. The Genoese fleet doesn't stand a chance against us. I took taxes for the second one, as usual, and for the third one I definitely choose the development focused on colonization. Alternatively, taxes. We're breaking down the French armies, literally. This Spain is very strong. The wars end as follows. Many provinces go to Gascony, war reparations, and three provinces go to Burgundy. It's bloody. And after this war, France probably won't recover. And I'm taking land, and there are rebellions. Why? Now we can finally recruit an explorer and set sail to explore the new world. Of course, the Caribbean comes first. And I've been waiting for the 50 crown land and completing this mission because it gives me a 10% nobility satisfaction, which means I can't revoke their privilege, right? Well, let the mission be fulfilled, and the Scots are winning again. But in the end, they lose.
All right, as you can see, I released a vassal here, and now I can hire Christopher Columbus. Finally, I can revoke that privilege. I can distribute all the remaining privileges. So the monarch points are spent, and cheaper advisors will be hired. We probably won't have stability issues in our country anymore. All the civil wars are behind us. And for the nobility, we have the strong duchess. And that's why I had those two vassals. He actually discovered the Caribbean and died. But at least he discovered a new world, and I immediately complete that mission. And I explore the Caribbean, but it's similar to Portugal. All the missions that increase our global settler increase and provide modifiers for faster colonization. I should click on them only when we have the first two ideas practically developed, to colonize as quickly as possible. No Portuguese presence seems to be found anywhere. And if you want to know how to create an unstoppable Hussar army as Poland, I recommend that episode. Moreover, it's presented in the style of a historical narrative. Let me know how it turns out.